Hi, my name is Dr. Howard Makofsky. I'd like to speak with you for a few moments about human posture and ideal human alignment. Human posture is a beautiful thing related to sports and performing arts and various recreational and work-related activities when it's demonstrated properly and ideally, which is what we're going to be talking about. What is posture? Posture comes from the Latin, which means to put or to place. And very often growing up, we were told to put your shoulders back and your chest out and your chin in, and that was ideal posture. Well, that might be halfway there, but the kind of ideal alignment and posture correction that I'm going to be speaking to you about is not rigid. It's not tense and stiff. It's natural and light and comfortable. Ideal alignment from the side can be demonstrated by a plumb line, which traverses through the ear, shoulder, the hip, the knee, and the ankle, and divides the body into an anterior and a posterior half that are symmetrical and proportionate. And from the back, the plumb line divides the body symmetrically into a right and left half. What is a good working definition and understanding of posture? I think it comes down to three basic components. One is that this alignment, this posture is balanced. Secondly, that this alignment is efficient. And thirdly, that it is vertical. And when we have these three components, that it is balanced, efficient, and vertical, then we have an ideal human alignment that meets the functional demands of both stability and mobility. We'll take a few minutes to discuss the work of three pioneers in our present understanding of posture theory. The first is the work of F.M. Alexander. Alexander coined the term primary control. Primary control is defined as the intrinsic mechanism for balance and support in the body. It assures that uprightness will be effortless and that movement will be supported and fluid. It depends on the preservation or the recovery of a dynamic relationship between the head and the spine in movement and in stillness. The second contributor to our understanding of ideal human alignment is Ida Rolf. Ida Rolf talked about the balanced body as being what one in which we had equipoise, in which there was a vertical relationship with gravity. And the third contributor is um, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Vladimir Yanda from the Czech Republic, who talked about two types of muscles in the body, muscles that are postural in function and muscles that are phasic. The postural muscles, we know that with the effects of aging and gravity and injury, tend to become short and the phasic muscles tend to become weak. Ideal postural alignment addresses these imbalances by stretching what tends to be tight and by strengthening what tends to be weak. Here we have demonstrated for us various types of postures. And if, as we look at the abnormal alignment of forward head and hyperkyphosis and the flat back and the sway back, we see what is ideal, and it always comes down to what is balanced, front to back, side to side, what is efficient, and what is vertical. And when we achieve that which is vertical and balanced, patients not only look better, but they also feel better. And those symptoms related to poor postural alignment, their headaches, and their neck pain, and their back pain, and their shoulder pain, will improve as well. Dr. Yanda discussed the syndrome known as the upper or shoulder cross syndrome, which is when we connect the muscles in the upper half of the body that tend to become short and connect those muscles that tend to become weak, we end up with a cross. And the treatment, according to Dr. Yanda, is to stretch what's tight and to strengthen what's weak. We're going to be speaking in a few minutes about an exciting new device in the therapeutic world of posture correction known as the posture jack. And as we go through these principles, we'll see that the posture jack will address all of these concerns related to ideal alignment. So when we have an individual who has this upper crossed or shoulder cross syndrome, we'll see 
that the posture jack will stretch the front of the chest, the pec major and minor muscles. It'll strengthen the lower scapula stabilizers to bring about this balance and alignment. Dr. Yonder also talked about the pelvic or lower cross syndrome where the hip muscles, the iliopsoas muscle in particular, become short, the paraspinals in the lumbar spine become short, and the lower abdominals and the gluteal muscles become weak. And again, the ideal intervention to address this imbalance is to stretch what's tight and to strengthen and to train what's weak. And we'll see how this device known as the posture jack helps very much to to address these two imbalances that are present in the human body. Forward head rounded shoulders posture is ubiquitous. It is something that affects most of us as we age. And you can see demonstrated here this young lady even at her young age in her early 20s is already beginning to demonstrate forward head rounded shoulders posture which involves excessive forward head carriage with the backward head and the forward neck. The result being rounding of the shoulders, protraction of the scapulae, and accentuation of the thoracic kyphosis. So anything that addresses forward head rounded shoulders posture, be it manual therapy, be it therapeutic exercise, be it myofascial release, or the use of the posture jack, needs to address these malalignments to bring about optimal alignment. Here's a gentleman from his uh, many years as a dentist leaning over patients demonstrates this concept of forward head rounded shoulders posture where his anterior chest muscles are short, his mid and lower scapular muscles are stretched and weak and as a result he developed a compressed spine, a more horizontal relationship of his head, neck and spine as compared to the more vertical and lengthened position that we're interested in achieving. Here's a young man who demonstrates an increased thoracic kyphosis who over time will go on to develop Yonda's upper cross syndrome with tightness in the front, weakness in the back, forward head carriage, and perhaps present to a physician at the age of 40, 45 years of age with headaches, with jaw pain, with shoulder impingement. We want to prevent that from happening. We want to be proactive with these patients. We function in an environment of evidence-based practice. We need to concern ourselves with outcomes, data, and good, useful medical evidence. Demonstrated here for you are four typical articles that demonstrate some of the evidence that's available in the literature related to the connection between poor posture, forward head, rounded shoulders posture, and problems related to headache, problems related to shoulder impingement, rotator cuff tendinitis, subdeltoid bursitis, problems related to temporomandibular disorder. What's interesting in the second study is that in this study the authors used posture correction therapy with, without ever applying a pain relieving modality specifically to the mandible. So they were able to demonstrate that by restoring proper alignment to the head, neck and spine that the symptoms related to malalignment in the upper half of the body improved simply by addressing postural alignment. Fascinating study. And there are others there related to shoulder impingement, neck pain and back pain, and uh, headaches as well. So we want to talk to you about this exciting new device. Um, it's called the Posture Jack. Its name comes from the fact that it is a jacket. You put it on, it's portable, you take it with you but most importantly that it gives you this sense of being jacked up, of being thrust upward against gravity, of actually having an anti-gravity mechanism in the body to defy gravity. People as they get older, what do they say? I'm shrinking, I'm getting short, shorter, my head is pushing my neck forward, my shoulders are coming forward. And now we have something to actually give them beyond just medication for temporary pain relief to actually jack them up and, makes them and make them taller and more vertical. 